Okay, now we're entering into chapter 11, induction and engine airflow systems. Induction and engine airflow systems. As you can see, you're gonna have 44 questions in this section. I'm gonna go ahead and divide it into four even parts, 11 question per part. Let's get started. Number one. Preheat the intake air. Preheat the intake air. So a method commonly used to prevent carburetor icing is to preheat the intake air. Preheat the intake air. Number two, air temperatures between 30 to 40 degrees Fahrenheit. Air temperatures between 30 to 40 degrees Fahrenheit. So carburetor icing is most severe at air temperatures between 30 and 40 degrees Fahrenheit. Carburetor icing is most severe at 30 to 40 degrees Fahrenheit. Number three, the airstream instead of the carburetor. The airstream instead of the carburetor. So into what part of the reciprocating engine induction system is de-icing alcohol normally injected? It's injected in the airstream ahead of the carburetor. In the airstream ahead of the carburetor. Number four, a decrease in manifold pressure with constant RPM. A decrease in manifold pressure with constant RPM. So carburetor icing on an engine equipped with a constant speed propeller can be detected by a decrease in manifold pressure with constant RPMs. Number five, carburetor, carburetor. So what part of an aircraft in flight will begin to accumulate ice before any other? And that is the carburetor. The carburetor will accumulate ice before anything else. So make sure you take care of that, carburetor. Number six, alcohol spray and heated induction air alcohol spray and heated induction air. So carburetor icing may be eliminated by which of the following methods? Alcohol spray and heated induction air. Alcohol spray and heated induction air. Number seven, none is required. None is required. So where would a carburetor air heater be located in a fuel injection system? You don't require it. You need a carburetor heater when you have a carburetor. You don't need a carburetor heater when you have fuel injection systems, all right? None is required in a fuel injection system. Number eight, ice was forming with in the carburetor. Ice was forming in the carburetor. So an increase in manifold pressure when the carburetor heat is applied indicates that their ice was forming in the carburetor. An increase in manifold pressure when the carburetor heat is applied indicates that ice was forming in the carburetor. Number nine, carburetor air scoop. Carburetor air scoop. So during full power output of an unsupercharged engine equipped with a float type carburetor, in which of the following areas will the highest pressure exist? And that would be the carburetor air scoop. The carburetor air scoop. Number 10, a decrease in power and possibly detonation. A decrease in power and possibly detonation. The use of carburetor in an air heater when it's not needed causes a decrease in power and possibly detonation. The use of the carburetor air heater when not needed causes a decrease in power and possibly detonation. Number 11, density of air in the cylinder increases. Density of air in the cylinder increases. So as manifold pressure increases, in a reciprocating engine, the density of the air in the cylinder increases as well. 
Manifold pressure increases, the density of the air in the cylinder also increases. Density of air cylinder increases. Guys, take your first quiz in this section and I'll see you soon.